What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to another Resplendent review. So this time I'm going to be taking a look at Brave Ike and this is going to be my comprehensive analysis of him. I'll also be going over a lot of builds that he could run for him and at the end I'll be having a bonus section. As always, if you guys do enjoy these Resplendent review videos, I would really appreciate if you could leave a like and subscribe because unlike Faye Pass, it is definitely free to do and I appreciate it a lot. So that's it, I hope you guys do enjoy and let us begin. First, my father's gear, and now this. Why do I need to change clothes? Brave Ike is definitely one of those units who did not need a resplendent version. There are just so many outdated units, but he is still a unit who makes use of every single extra stat point that he can get. So he makes fantastic use out of these resplendent stats, and he does have extra bulk, which is absolutely fantastic for such a top tier tank like him. At higher level, extra speed does matter a lot and that is going to be important for the max investment builds as you'll see later on so the extra speed is much much appreciated on brave ike actually Irvine accelerates his special trigger by one which is absolutely amazing and if he's receiving consecutive attacks from the foes then the damage from the second hit does get reduced by 80 percent which is quite a lot and the weapon refine gives him damage reduction on foes first hit by 40 percent and it also has the additional effect of basically giving the foe a forced desperation. So if foe is going to be attacking him, they are going to be immediately making a follow-up attack on him that will be triggering the primary condition of Irvine. This could of course be bypassed with stuff like hardy bearing units. So hardy bearing units are definitely one of the counters for Brave Ike because it does disable the secondary condition of his weapon refine and then he's not going to be getting any kind of damage reduction on his second hit. Brave Ike also has an exclusive skill in Bjork's Blessing. Uh, this skill has aged terribly. Even back when this came out, this wasn't really all that too hot because it only neutralized the bonuses of cavalry and flying units and that's pretty much it. There are way better options than Bjork Blessing on a slot B and you should most likely just run those over this skill unless this skill gets buffed later on in the game. Every player can get one copy of Brave Ike from Hero's Path and if you are having Fae Pass, then you get another copy for free. And uh, it is not really worth foddering him for steady breath in 2021. There are way better slotted skills than having a breath skill. And there are also units like Legendary Lucina, Neo Veluria, who do have this kind of breath effect in their weapons. So they can support much better and the unit does not have to run a breath skill themselves. So if you pull a lot of Brave Ikes, then he's really not worth foddering off in my personal opinion. You can just merge him up and he's a really really strong unit. Overall Ike is definitely one of the best tanks in the entire game because of Irvine and the damage reduction that he can get out of it. Of course he's not an invincible unit, there are of course counters to him and many red units can give him trouble and as we go more and more into the lifespan of the game we are seeing skills that can negate the damage reduction skills or at least reduce it like Deadeye. We also have dual lift with this weapon. So still Brave Ike is a really good unit to use even at unmerged he's really amazing. If you don't really want to fodder off anything then I guess on super budget you could just run Kripo Sacred Seal and give him reposition but you should definitely try to invest a bit more into him because he's such a good unit. Bjork's Blessing isn't really all that good so you could run quicker post and slot B and have something like a Tax Smoke that can help him tank stuff and you could just run a solo skill or a stand skill in a slot B. Brave Ike's best lot of skill is Distant Counter and even if it's a premium skill, it is definitely the premium skill which is present on most amount of units in the game so it's still not the hardest skill to get and Brave Ike's makes a fantastic use out of this. Even if his resistance is low, the damage reduction does help him even tank mages and magical units in general. So Distant Counter is going to be a really fantastic investment on Brave Ike. Even if you use him at low merges, he's still a very functional and reliable tank. You can also use him with Guard and Slot B and have Cook Repose so this could just uh, prevent any kind of special acceleration. But still many of the times with Irvine's Weapon Refine, many foes are not going to be able to trigger their uh, specials because of the Force Desperation even if they have a 2 turn special. If they're not having any kind of special acceleration then they're not going to be triggering that special but still Guard is a really good skill to have on a tank. And finally we have the standard build for Brave Ike using Distant Counter and Null Counter Disrupt for Aether Raid's offense. So this is a pretty standard build that you can use even on low merges and this will definitely help you quite a bit as long as you only use them as a counter pick. Do not expect <laughs> Brave Ike to take on entire teams at low merges if you just yeet him into the range of the enemy because every single good Aether Raid's team does account for Brave Ike and they have some sort of check present on the team to take him on and low merge 
Ike doesn't have as much bulk, obviously, as a max invested Ike. Um, so I still use this build against Cav Lines when I have Brave Micaiah on my team as well, because Cav Lines can be taken on a bit easily if you have double tanking. So use him as the counter pick against really annoying teams or the teams which are kind of weak to Brave Ike. And uh, you could also use him in Ether 8's defense as a frontliner. I would say that he's definitely a pretty solid frontliner compared to someone like Selef, who has definitely aged really badly because of the bowl tower increase. Brave Ike still has the damage reduction, so that does make him decently bulky, even at low merges. And this lunge build can be really good if you use the Lost Castle map on your Aether 8's defense. And that's a pretty common map for a lot of Infantry Pulse teams. So he could be fit onto that team. And if he gets uh, Infantry Pulse boost from like a high HP dancer like Ninian, Nils, or Sylvia, he can have a three turn Gale Force. And even if he initiates combat against an enemy, he can trigger Gale Force because he'll have one hit and then take two hits back. And that can just allow him to lunge and get the unit out of the defensive tile and even go into the back line of the opponent. And he can pretty much work as a Wings of Mercy anchor as well. You could also use him with Bonfire. Now Mystic Boost is actually a good option on Ike in the Anima Season because Sather Shell of Regan targets the resistance of Ike. It does have the adaptive damage and Mystic Boost can disable adaptive damage. So it can be a pretty good thing. And Bonfire could be used as a special, even Ignis can. But I like Bonfire a bit more because if you're facing a unit who can disable your follow-up attacks, like maybe Legendary Leaf who has the impact effect whenever he's in the player's hands, but then Bonfire can be a pretty good thing to just retaliate back after you have taken two hits. And still, it's a pretty strong special because of his defense. You could also use him with the same guard and quick repose build. Guard's threshold can be a bit annoying, especially with something like Bolt Tower. So make sure you have Catapult. Um, again, if you're using some kind of infantry pulse team, it's really important to take care of enemies' Bolt Towers when you're using a frontliner. And you could also use him with uh, Lull Attack Defense at higher investments. So Lull Attack Defense is basically a better Bjork's Blessing and gives him much better performance. In a lot of in-game content, you're not gonna be needing Null Counter Disrupt that much, so if you don't wanna use him for Aether Raids, and you just wanna use him for a lot of the in-game content, then Lull Attack Defense is a pretty good option overall, and can even work in some competitive game modes as you'll see. So finally, if you wanna max invest into Brave Ike, it's not a bad option actually, because he does get reruns quite often in the weekly revivals, and people can already get two copies of him with Hero's Path and Fae Pass. So if you want to max invest into him, then I guess you could run the Null Counter Disrupt build. You can definitely get pretty bulky in the Astro Season with Quad Mythic support. But in my opinion, if you have max invested into Brave Ike and you want to use him more as your main tank and not just as a counter pick with Null Counter Disrupt, then in my opinion, the ideal Brave Ike build at max investment for Aether Raids is going to be using Null Follow Up and Speed. Now, many people might ask, what is the reason of investing into his speed when he actually wants to take more attacks from the enemy because he has got the damage reduction. Well, the thing is that now follow up Brave Ike who's fast can basically beat his counters who have got Hardy Bearing. Keep in mind you have got stuff like Bramimond who can have Hardy Bearing Sacred Seal. It doesn't really matter to Brave Ike, Fallen Julia with Hardy Bearing. Doesn't matter to Brave Ike because he disables the auto follow up. We have got Dual Lift now who also has auto follow up but now follow up just gets rid of that. So in general, we are going to be getting more and more units who have these auto follow up skills. So null follow up gets a lot of value and against many of the hardy bearing units who rely on their, um, you know, auto follow up, he can easily deal with them. We also have Seros now in the Astro season, who is going to be a really staple, especially if she's going to be in a Hero Rises event. So Brave Eye can just stop her follow up attack and also, you know, double her through her impact skill, which is going to be extremely good. Pulse Smoke is going to be helping him a lot and you can easily support him with someone like Brave Lucina. Brave Lucina is basically the best partner for any kind of Brave Ike. That combo is just really, really popular. So if you want to max invest into Ike, I would highly recommend having Null follow up and investing into his speed. And investing into his speed is a bit better now because of the resplendent stats. I think that Null follow up is truly the superior build at max investment compared to Null counter disrupt. And uh, Null Follow Up is just going to be aging much better as the game goes on because we are just going to be getting more and more effects uh, with Auto Follow Up and I can, you know, just get past those and even take care of many of the Hardy Bearing Units himself, which is really amazing. Investing into him with uh, more speed also means that if a fast unit has got Hardy Bearing, he can basically take the first hit, but uh, if he's not going to get doubled, 
then he doesn't really have to worry about their hardy bearing because with the hardy bearing sacred seal his force desperation gets disabled which means that he's not going to be getting any kind of damage reduction for a slower brave ike this could mean a lot of trouble but for a faster brave ike he's simply not going to get doubled by that kind of threat which means that he can still take on a hardy bearing unit so that's why investing into speed is really amazing and no follow-up is going to be really good in either of those seasons in my opinion you could also use him in defense with the same launch kill force build, but of course max investment is going to be making it much much better. And lull attack defense is actually a pretty good option if you want to use him in Aether 8's defense because everyone and their mom uses visible buffs, especially with stuff like peony. So lull attack defense does give you a lot of value. Again in the anima season mystic boost can be a pretty good option to deal with uh, Sather shell of Regan. And uh, you can also run sudden panic on him because he does have really good HP. So you can be used as a frontliner for many of the infantry pulse teams with that and sudden panic can definitely annoy your opponents. This is especially really good if you have high threat range teams with stuff like bow cavaliers or ranged cavaliers in general. So you don't give much space for the opponent to move while I can just pin them down with a sudden panic and annoy the hell out of them. Odd Pulse die in my opinion is a pretty underrated option in the anima season and this is to specifically counter Regan and her Sather shell. Sather Shell does get pre-charged for Regan, so unless Regan comes and attacks Ike on the very first turn, which is not going to be happening many times, Ike is simply going to be disabling and removing the pre-charge on Regan's Sather Shell, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. So this can basically allow you to deal with Regan a bit better, and Regan is going to be a very common unit that pretty much every single team is going to be running so it's not a bad option honestly and it can be an option that can annoy even some more pre-charge units like maybe legendary Lilina for example or if you get even more pre-charge legendary units or mythic units like that. Odd Pulse die is definitely going to be aging better especially because he does have really good HP to make use of that. And finally we have got Arena Brave Ike so because of Bjark Blessing being a 300 SP skill he can actually score similarly to Astrum, Itsuki and all of those kinds of units in that scoring area. Even though Brave Ike has got lower BSC than them, so Bjork's Blessing can definitely help you in arena scoring only with Green Duel Infantry, which sucks a bit because you're missing out on Distant Counter, and Brave Ike can actually take on some units like Legendary Chrom, Legendary Leaf pretty easily, uh, but at least he can tank them and then hopefully take them out, so in arena you could use him if you have max invested into him. Many people might ask me why I'm not featuring a damage reduction build using Close Call Repel, and frankly speaking, I don't really prefer that kind of build. The reason being is that he just has much better options for slot B than running another damage reduction skill because damage reduction is not additive, it's multiplicative. And damage reduction is going to be having diminishing returns as we go into the future of the game because we're going to be getting more and more fast units. And the thing with damage reduction skills is that to get the max damage reduction and get the full use out of it, you need to outspeed the unit by quite a bit and Ike is definitely not going to be as fast as many of the modern units and that we're going to be getting in the future who are going to be super fast. So in my opinion unless you're swimming in close call repel all of those burn fodder I don't think it's a very good investment. I mean I know damage reduction does sound really attractive and stacking even more damage reduction but in my opinion he gets more value out of something like null follow up or even lull attack defense in the slot B than running another damage reduction skill in slot B when he already has some with his Irvan. And now time for the bonus section. So what if his exclusive skill was better? Of course Brave Ike is a really strong unit. He has got amazing stats. He also has amazing weapon refine but his exclusive skill is really lacking and uh, he was the winner of Chooser Legends 1. Um, so I feel like you should get some kind of better skill. We have been getting some exclusive skill refines with Fearm Arm and Legendary Ike, so maybe Brave Ike could also get it. So Bjork's Blessing is basically based on the Laguz Guard item from Path of Radiance, uh, but still I think we can have a bit more flexibility on it if you want to use it in Fey. So I think I would give it Lull Attack Defense basically and this would have a very unique effect which no other unit has it in the game, that Beast units can transform despite being adjacent to Ike. Keep in mind, beast units only transform when they're beside a non-human or if they're alone. So this can be a really good and quite interesting mechanic and it does go with his lore as well. 
So I think this kind of improvement with Bjork's Blessing is gonna be really, really tasteful. And I would honestly love it if they make it a bit better and make it something like that. Obviously, this is not a better option than Null Follow-Up or any of the other skills, but still it gives you a good reason to run this kind of skill on a budget build and still get something out of it. And the uniqueness of it is definitely gonna be uh, pretty amazing, especially for a lot of the Tellius and Ike fans. So hope you all enjoyed this review. Make sure to share this video with your friends who are big Ike fans or really want to build him when he has got the Resplendent version. And I want to thank all of my YouTube members for their constant support. And if you enjoyed, then please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps me tremendously. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes make about as much sense as a brave hero who's such a good unit getting a Resplendent version before any of these other outdated units. So that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.